for your presence. Your word is so precious to us. And Lord, we thank you that we hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you. We find great spoil when we open up the word of God. And Father, we just glorify your name. Let us see you for who you truly are as we dive into your scriptures tonight in Jesus' name. Be in this house. Let your presence change us. Let your presence change us by the power that is in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Open up your Bibles tonight, if you would, to Matthew um, chapter 16. You know, we've been um, just, I don't know, we've hit so many subjects, I think, since the, uh, the last of the year, actually before the last of the year, probably from about Thanksgiving time on. We have just, uh, we've just been on a journey, and it's been really, really powerful and beautiful, and talking about the Word, talking about truth, and um, so, so many different things that we've hit. In the last several services, we've been uh, talking about love and talking about the love of God. And so, um, you know, we are called to love people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we are called to love God. We are called to love people. And I don't know about you, but, you know, when we, when we open up the Bible, sometimes if we just read it the wrong way, we read it to just teach us a bunch of rules. To just give us a bunch of rules. Give us all the do's, give us all the don'ts of what we're supposed to do. But you know what the gospel really wants to do is the gospel wants to teach you who you really are. Amen. Who you are in Christ Jesus. And so it wants to show us the truth about who we've always been, but at the same time we didn't really see who we've always been created to be. Amen? Because we were what? We were created in the image of God. So we are supposed to be in His likeness, in His nature. We are supposed to be like Jesus. And I don't know about you, but there is a reason that Jesus hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. See, they did not know who they were. They did not know they had been created in the image of God. Therefore, their minds get given over to evil, to wickedness, to perversion. And you know, when you look at the, just the word perversion, just at the word wicked, we talk about it all the time. Because that is the, the culture we are living in now. There is some twisted mindsets out there, people. And that is exactly where that word comes from. It is just twisted. Where you get wicker furniture, it's all twisted together. And as it twists, it gains strength. Amen? And so that's where we are today, is in this perverted, twisted-minded world. And we've got twisted-minded people looking at a pure gospel, twisting the gospel to say whatever it is that they want it to say, to satisfy themselves, to make them feel good, instead of looking into this word and saying, this is a mirror. And I should be reflecting what is in this word. My life, how I talk, how I walk, what I do, everything in my life. Not just when I'm in church, when I'm with the church people, but every day of my life I'm supposed to be living that way. One of the things that we see as we start to look into Matthew 16 is this. The gospel... Regardless of what your mindset has always been, the main purpose of the gospel is to teach you that you're going to have to deny yourself. Amen. You're going to have to deny yourself. And so as we get into this in Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25, it said, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him pray the sinner's prayer. What version has If any man 
will come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. If you lose your life, you will find it. That is not a complicated gospel, people. I don't know why we try to make this so complicated, but it is that simple. If you want to come after him, deny yourself. Oh, but that's what we don't want. That's what we don't want to hear. We would rather just sit and say, you know what? I'd rather just say a simple little sinner's prayer than positionally I got my, I'm going to get into heaven free card because Jesus paid the price for me. But now down here I can live however I want to because after all, I got my ticket punched and I'm on my way to glory. I'm going to make it there. And at the same time, <laughs> if all the gospel is to you is to make you feel better, about you, you're not reading the gospel right. Amen. You're not reading it right. Amen? And so we have to have an understanding that when the Bible says, put off the old man, we don't want to hear that. I was telling Andy today, we want to be new creations in Christ Jesus with the old man. And it doesn't work that way. We have to put off the old, once again, <laughs> Getting rid of what was and putting on what the new man is, right? And here's the thing. He literally says it. It's, it's not complicated. Why do we make the gospel so complicated? It is simple. We just don't want to do it. <laughs> if you're going to come after me, you must deny yourself. <laughs> now, here's what we do. Let's just say... We have a really, really powerful service. There's a lot of sinners in the room. And I have a lot of people all the time say, why don't you have altar calls for sinner? Well, when I see one in the house, I'll have one. <laughs> you all are saved. You're being taught. Amen? When I look around and I see some sinners, then we have the sinner's prayer. Amen? But I'm expecting you to live like Christians because I know you've all had your get out of hell free card for many years. Amen. Some longer than others. So it would be, if you're doing and living the gospel, <laughs> I shouldn't have to have an altar call when I see you. Amen. I'm just saying. But let's just say there's three sinners in the room tonight. And the anointing just gets strong and we're just preaching along. And then all of a sudden it comes to that altar call. And you know what they sound like. Do you know... If you left this place tonight and you were killed out there on the highway, if you were going to go to heaven or not? Because if you don't know that tonight, you need to get yourself positionally right with God. Wow. And so they come up and they're crying. And no one told them. Come on. Now when you leave... You got to deny yourself and you got to take up your cross and you got to follow Jesus. So positionally, they're good because they said that famous sinner's prayer, but no one followed it up with, Lord, I am not going to do the things that I did before I walked in the house. I just need my get out of hell free card so that I seriously. And and that's not the gospel. It's not what the gospel says. And so, you know, <laughs> in case you die tonight, I want you to know you're going to heaven. What a miracle. It's great. But you know what the greatest miracle is? The greatest miracle is when you die right here. Wow. And you die to yourself. Wow. And you're out now able to be that new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have truly 
truly, truly been put behind you and knew all things now have become new. And now you're not walking as a new creation in old creation stuff, but now you're a new creation with the life of Christ flowing out of you. And in that, that is a daily, daily decision that you make not to put that old man back on, not to resurrect him out of that watery grave. That's what water baptism is all about. It is about burying the old. But yet if you talk to most Christians, they will tell you everything they've been through. Because they never buried the old man in a watery grave. Why? Because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to let go of that stuff. It's hard to let go of those mindsets. It's hard to read the word right. It's hard to deny yourself the right to have unforgiveness. You have to deny yourself the right. Amen? And so what happens is, in today's culture, we have church people living for themselves instead of living out of Him, which is where real life truly is. We are supposed to be living the life of Jesus Christ. He is on the inside of us. And so what do I mean by that? We are taught to give to get. Why don't we just give because we love people? Why are we always waiting on something to come back to us? It's not that those things won't come back because those scriptures are there too. But if all you focus on is the give to get scriptures, you are now have a self-serving gospel because it's all about what you're going to get. I've literally always thought when I pay my tithes, I'm going to pay my tithes because I want to give to God. Not because I want to reap what He is going to give me back. Now I understand those bless. I understand those principles. I understand that when I give, I understand when I cast my bread on the water, it's not going to, it's coming back. I understand all of those principles of giving, and I am all about those principles of giving. But if the motive in my heart isn't because I love Him, and if I'm just giving to get, then I'm self-serving, and it has nothing to do with how glorious and how much in love I am with him. Is anybody hearing me? If you just give to get a better job, oh if God, if you just give me a better job, oh God, if you just bless me, oh God, if I just had a car that I could afford to get to church in, oh God, if I just had that home up on a hill, I'd open it up to hospitality and I'd bring in all the drug addicts and I'd bring in, and then you get all this stuff because when we obey God, stuff comes. Amen. My life is proof of that. When you obey God and you do what God wants you to do, you don't have to chase blessings. They chase you. Amen. They come and overtake you. Amen? That is what they do. So what happens is we begin to look at the gospel. It's not the gospel's not wrong. Those scriptures aren't wrong. Those principles aren't wrong. The way we view it is wrong because we don't view it through denying ourselves. Our mindset when we read the Word of God has got to be, i got to deny myself. Because this isn't about me anymore. This is about Christ in me. Amen? And so what happens is when we don't look at it right, we take all of those ooey-gooey, mushy scriptures that we love that's going to bless us and multiply us and prosper us, and we take all of those scriptures and they become our focus. They become, we become focused on ourselves. We become self-centered when all the time the main purpose of that gospel is so that you would become like him. Wow. So you would be just like Christ. Amen. When we read the word of God, it's not to get what you can get out of it. Yeah. It's to become like him. It's so his image will come through. That when I'm talking to Cindy, Cindy will see Jesus in me. That's why I'm supposed to be reading my Bible. That's why I'm supposed to be walking in love. That's why that I'm supposed to be diving in and studying. Not so I get the puffhead devil. Not so I, everybody thinks that I know all the Bible. Come on, they knew. They could quote the law. Better than any of us could. Yet at the same time, they missed the very point of being created in His image, loving like He loved. Amen? Amen. 
And we have become self-focused. We've become self-centered. And all the time it's been right in front of us. Wow. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Come on. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. When was the last time you've been a Christian for 30 years? When was the last time you literally said, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus? Wow. When is that truth? That, this, that was the very scripture that this church was founded on 30 years ago. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. When was the last time you focused on that? That's good. <laughs> First John 3, 2 says this. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we will be like him when you see him as he is. Well, how is he? What is he? He is love. God is love. And we're not going to become like him until we see him for love. Don't see him for stuff. That's good. Amen. That's good. Not see him for stuff. Seem for love, who he is, love. And then it goes on and says, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Yeah. See, there is a hope in us that when we see him for who he really is, we are going to be like him. Why? Because he's my mirror. I want to be that reflection. When I look in the world, we want to see if Jesus didn't do it, you shouldn't be doing it. If Jesus wouldn't have thought that, you shouldn't be thinking that. Amen. If Jesus wouldn't have responded that way, you shouldn't be responding that way. <laughs> How about if we just do what the Bible says? Give your life as you know it so that you can find a new life. Lose it. Lose your life. We are trying to hang on to everything we can. Oh, God, don't take that. Don't take that away from me. Oh, Lord, I've already given you this, 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 and this. Don't take that. Don't, I, I, need to, I need to hang on to that. And it's like, give it away. Give it all away. You're supposed to be dead. Amen. 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 Uh, and what happens is this. The end result of us not denying ourselves, not taking up our cross, not following after Jesus, you know what the end result of that is? You're not living the life you were created to live by Him. You were created to live a life in Him. That is what you were created for. And we are so far removed from that. That's why we have no joy. It's why we have no peace. It's why we're not walking in righteousness. It's why we're having all these issues. It's because we're still back here in that old nature. Wanting to keep it in our back pocket. Oh, but I've given up this and I've given up that and I've given up that. But I just can't let go of that. Wow. You can't just bring him into your life. Invite him in. You have to die to everything you've ever been. Hallelujah. All your reasoning, all your motives, all your self you're protecting, everything you're trying to keep in your little corner, all of that stuff has to go. Inviting him into your heart is awesome and it's wonderful. It's only a part of the process. It's not the whole thing. Amen? We have to be very careful. And so what happens is we lack understanding. We lack understanding. When we lack understanding, God's people perish. Why? Because they don't have any knowledge. Good. Yeah. And what does the Bible said? In all you're getting, what are you supposed to get? Understanding. understanding. Let me say it to you a hundred different ways tonight. This word right here is not a self serving gospel. You deny yourself. You take up your cross. Whoever told you your life was going to be easy when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior lied to you. They lied to you. He never promised you that. He promised you he'd be with you in hard times. You know why marriages fall apart? Because no one sees Christ in it. Because it's self serving. As soon as I don't need you anymore, as soon as you make me mad, we, we, don't, we don't honor what it really was. 
The vows that we spoke, <laughs> when it gets worse, we're out. When you get poorer, I'm gone. <laughs> That's what happens. And so here's what it is. You ever heard that phrase, what you don't know won't hurt you? Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lie. Yeah. It's just a lie. You can look in the word of God, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, what you don't know won't hurt you. You ever heard this one? Don't get your hopes up. That's a lie. Amen. That's a lie. Yeah. Where scripturally can someone tell me not to get my hopes up? Wow. It's a lie. Amen. <laughs> God helps those that help themselves. That's a lie too. That's not in there. It's not even a scripture. People will literally say that because that's what they think Christianity is all about. You've heard it all the time growing up. This was my mom to me. You made your bed, now you sleep in it. That was a lie too. That was a lie too, mama. No, because as crazy as that sounds, I had that mentality. Well... You know, I blew it. I made it. So I might as well just lay here in it and whatever. And no hope to ever get out of it. No hope. Amen. No hope. Amen. Because my Bible tells me that when I repent, when I repent, I get a do-over. I don't have to lay there anymore. I don't have to lay in it anymore. I can get up out of that place. But the only way I get the do-over is if I repent. Hallelujah. Amen. But this one, yep, you made your bed. Might as well sleep in it. <laughs> the gospel is not self-serving. The gospel wants to get in you. And it wants to change the way you live. It wants to change the way you think. It wants to change the way you respond. Amen? And it wants you to be like him. And you know one thing that I see, one thing that all the way through the scriptures you can see, we know God's faithful. We know God's love. Amen. But you know, in his faithfulness, when you think about that word, God is consistent. Amen. When we don't walk in love, when we don't see Jesus as consistent in our lives, we are all over the place. Wow. We are inconsistent in our faith. What do you mean by that? Well, let's say rent was due last week. Okay? And man, God came through and someone just miraculously dropped you a check in the mail and you got money to pay your rent. So you come up in here that next service and you shaba, hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> you got your hanky the whole nine yards and you're shouting and praising. He is faithful. Four weeks later, rent's due again. And you come into church. What's wrong? I'm good. Well, there must be something wrong with you. I'm all right. Well, come on. I can tell by your countenance something's wrong. I just don't know where God is. My rent's due tomorrow, and I don't know what I'm going to do. That's inconsistent. Amen. It's inconsistent. And I want to ask you, what about God? What about His love? What about Jesus changed in those four weeks? Amen. Nothing changed. Nothing changed at all. <laughs> oh. See, we've got to know Him. Amen? We've got to know Him. If He's inconsistent in your belief system, you just don't know the Word. You just don't know. Well, that's an insult. I do too know the word. No. If your actions, your character, if it's not portraying what you're saying, Amen. it's not true. Okay? And so we've got to know that our life is consistent. And here's what, one thing that I've always noticed. And you think about this. The person that you know that is the strongest Christian that you know, I'm going to tell you one thing about every one of their lives. It's the same. They're consistent. Amen. Yeah. They're consistent. They don't waver on a bad day. 
They don't waver on a good day. They are consistent. They are steady. If anybody knows my brother, you will know one thing. He is consistent. He is steady. He is never up and down all over the place. Does he have those feelings? Absolutely. But he knows how to steady, steady. He knows how to contain his being. He knows how to respond, when to respond, when not to respond. <laughs> Now, I'm not calling him a saint, but I can see that in his life. And if you know him, I know you would agree with me. Amen. And I know you can think of people in your life consistent because that's the goal. Amen. Because when people see consistency, oh my goodness, her life just fell apart and she's steady. She's not being moved. It doesn't mean you don't have emotions about what's going on. But your faith isn't moved. One day you believe in God, the next day you think He's abandoned you. What in the world? What kind of God of love is that? <laughs> when you can't see Him in the bad stuff, but all you do is see Him in the good things. We got problems. Amen? <sighs> the motive that we live by. He knew what He created you to be. And no matter what you are doing... He has not changed his mind. Wow. He hasn't changed his mind about you. Amen. He knows what he created you to be. And he hasn't changed his mind. <laughs> and so, I don't know. Ephesians 3.19 says this. To know the love of Christ. Not to know Jesus. To know the love of Christ. Which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. To know the love of God is to be full. To be full with all the fullness of God, needy doesn't fit in there. Because if you are full, you are not needy. That means everything that you need is right there at his disposal. And that is what he has called us to know, the love of Christ with passes knowledge. We want knowledge today. We have knowledge at our fingertips today. The more we know, the more we think people are going to, to respect us. People are going to look up to us. No, the love of God is what people want to see. The love of God that is consistent in your life. Whether you stepped on my toes today or whether you lifted me up today. It doesn't matter. Can I see that consistent love of God? Because when that consistent love of God is in our lives, then I'm going to know somebody knows him. Amen. And when somebody knows him, then they're going to take stock in what you're saying. Amen. We must be careful. It's not about your church attendance. Come on. Christianity is not a doctrine. It is becoming the life you live. The Bible says in Acts 17, it is in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being. We have to be full of the love of God. If you're angry, if you're jealous, if you're frustrated, if you're discouraged, if you're disappointed, those are warning signals you are on the wrong track. You may have be puffed up in a bunch of knowledge, but you are on the wrong track. Why? Because you're living a life, but you're not living a life full of the Spirit of God, which is the love of God that we have to have. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. If you love... There's one reason. If you love, there is one reason. Because you know him. I'm not talking human love. I'm talking God love. If you love, there's only one reason. Because you know him. Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. If you don't love, there's one reason. You don't know him. You don't know him. Oh, how dare you say that to me. Hey, before then, Andy's telling me the scriptures before, which I think we used in the last couple of weeks, that said, you know what? 
If you say you love him and you don't love your brother, you're a liar. I'm telling you, you don't know him. Uh, in other verses, he's telling you, you're a liar. If you don't love God, whew, don't get mad at me. But it's in the Word of God. Amen. Why don't we read it properly? Amen. Why? Why don't we? I'll tell you why. Because it's self-serving. We read it through self-serving. We read it through the wrong eyes. We read it with the wrong motive. We read it out of the old man. We don't read it out of being a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now the love of God's been shed abroad in my heart. Oh my goodness, now I can let that love out of there. I don't even know what that love looks like. Well, when you know Him, you'll get to know that love. Amen? We'll all grow in that love. Can anybody say my love tank's totally full tonight? Come on. <laughs> We're going to be growing in this till Jesus comes. That's what I think. Amen. <laughs> what is eternal life? That you might know Him. It is as solid in the Scriptures as anything you can talk about doctrinally. There's nothing more solid in there than to talk about the love of God. And at the same time, we can't see it. We don't see it. We see everything but that. The last thing Jesus recorded when he prayed in John 17, 21, he says this, that they may all, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. Listen, why? That the world may believe that you sent me. Why are you created in his image? Why are you supposed to be walking and not serving Him, not self-serving gospel, a serving Jesus gospel? So the world will know Him. That's good. Most Christians are giving the world the same love that the world gives the world. I like you if you like me. Step on my toes, I step on your toes. When we become one like we are one, then the world will know that you sent your son. What was he saying? He's saying this is the purpose. This is the intent. This is the very will of God. It's not just, well, go to church. <laughs> when you love God, you'll run to church. Amen. Why? So you can get saved all over again? So you can look like you're all that? No. So we stir each other up in love. We equip, we equip, we teach, amen? We all come together till we reach the unity of the faith because the love of God is all around us. You don't come here because so somebody will accept you. You don't come to church to be qualified to get into heaven. That is not what it is about. We come here to stir each other up in love because the world doesn't have any of it out there to give you. But if we can stir each other up and we can stay in that unity of faith, we're all living for the same reason. We all got different things going on in our lives. We work different places. Our families aren't the same. All the dynamics are different. But when we come in here, we are in the love of God and we are building, we are building each other up. Amen? What we are supposed to be doing. One mind, one accord, one spirit, so that when we go out there, they see the love of God on you. Amen? And what do we want to do? We just want to disagree. You know how many? Brian can tell you this. How many times the church phone rings? How do you baptize? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit or Jesus only? Do you baptize in water or do you sprinkle? It's unbelievable. And I'm like, somebody talk about the love of God. Because I'm not going to sit and argue with people over stuff like that. That is silly doctrinal stuff. When you love God, do what the Bible says to do. You don't have to get all benefit. We think we're right. We think it's to the point that two Christians can't talk together and have a conversation if, you don't, or if you're not in my little arena over here. If you don't speak in tongues, you ain't good like me. 
And we can't find no, and and I get it. We're not all going to worship together because we're all in different arenas. That's fine. There were 12 tribes in Israel. And guess what? They were all one under God. I know you're never going to reach the unity stuff in cities. Good luck. Because I've never seen it work in all my life. It doesn't work. But at the same time, the heart issue of we are in unity. And I'm not going to stand there and argue a doctrine with you, something you believe that I don't necessarily believe. And I'm not going to cut you off. I'm not in a fight with you because my war isn't with you anyway. My war is with not flesh and blood. Not flesh and blood. Doctrinal disagreements. (laughs) Just not going to do it. If you're going to fight religious debate with me, I won't do it. Why? Because I'm not here to upstage anybody. We're called to walk in the love of God. And when we do that, yes, it's glorious. And yes, there's unity. And yes, God is with us. And yes, love is in the room. Amen? We have to be willing to not fight with one another. (laughs) Well, I just believe in the gifts. and I know I operate in the word of knowledge. Well, instead of debating about it, why don't you just prove to them? Give them a word of knowledge and quit talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let him walk away and say, how in the world did he know that? So come on, why debate about it? Demonstrate it. Amen. Someone said, tell me, well, I don't believe tongues is for today. Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You want to cast the devil out of me. Try. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you think that's a devil, go ahead. You're not going to argue. I better not stand in front of you and do that. You will do it. Hallelujah. I'll come over here to Aaron. He'll be nicer to me than my husband would be to me. (laughs) Do you know what I'm saying? You can't argue with someone who's had an experience with something. That is, it would be crazy for me to sit and argue. It also would be, be crazy to sit there and da 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 in front of you too. So I'm not going to do that. I'm using that as an example. Don't go do that to somebody, please. <laughs> do not follow my example. I just put it before you. I was trying to shock you into seeing what it is I'm trying to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rather than discuss it, why not just demonstrate it? Because it'll beat an argument every time. It'll beat an argument every time. You know, Jesus was all about... He did miracles, didn't he? Come on. Look at the miracles that Jesus did. Blind eyes open, deaf people here. He raised the dead, for goodness sakes. He did miracles. He really did. And the problem many times today is people get hungry pursuing power without his heart. They pursue the power of God without his heart. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Because it's love. What, what? Well, that takes faith to be able to do that. Faith worketh by love. Amen? And what happens is, if you don't do it out of love, if, if Brian doesn't go to Pakistan because he loves the Pakistan people, okay? And he can see the power that can flow when you're in third world countries, okay? That's a very dangerous place. You know why? Because if he doesn't do it out of love, now all of a sudden he becomes the fourth member of the Godhead and now he can do miracles. But when you keep your heart checked right and your motive is love because you love those people. The love for those people drove the fear out of him the first time he was there. Because as big and bold and fearless as he is, when you're in a place like that, it's a lot different. And you looking behind your back at everything. You heard his stories. Ready to pat down everybody to see what they had on them. You know. But love, when he looked at them, drove out fear. It drove it out. 
So you can't pursue power without his heart. Because if you do, it's where you find your identity. It's where you'll find your momentum. And your gift, listen to me, giftings cannot identify you. Amen. Let me say it this way. Do you just want to be used by him? Or do you want to be like him? Because if you're just after power, you just want to be, you just, you don't want to be like him. You want him to use you. Wow. Sun tricks. Sun tricks. That's what Brian calls them, sun tricks. Think about that. You don't want to just be used by him. You want to be like him. And if you don't pursue that with the right heart in the scriptures, you'll find all the power gifts. You'll find all the miracles. You'll be drawn to all that stuff. And you will get lost in your identity. And you may operate in all of it. You may know every principle. You may be able to get everybody you've ever touched, healed, say whatever it is that you're doing. And at the same time, does my Bible not say the same thing as yours? The giftings and callings are without repentance. <laughs> you can read someone's mail you can lay hands on them you're healed but you go home and trash anybody that stood in your way you're watching ministers fall all over this nation they're getting up they're preaching they're wordsmiths they're filling altars they're gifted they're talented all of these gifts are flowing through them and they're going back to a hotel room and putting cocaine up their nose They're dropping like flies. Why? Because they're pursuing power. And they're not pursuing Him. They want to be used by Him, but they don't want to be like Him. We're called to be like Him. We're called to know Him. God is love. Amen? Brian always says it this way. They don't care how much you know. They want to know how much you care. Right? It's not works. It's not legalism. It's about is your heart right? Is your heart pure? Is the love of God flowing out of you? Is the love of God even in you? <laughs> can we get to the point in our lives that you can literally say, I'll just give you an example. I was driving this week and I passed somebody that I feel like did me wrong. <laughs> and the minute I passed them, and here they are waving, and inside I felt that little, oh, are you kidding me right now? I mean, you, come on, you all got what you said. Are you kidding me right now? And I did not get past the bumper of their car. And I heard the Lord speak to me and said, they don't know you anything. Wow. They don't know you nothing. That's the truth. And I was like, you're right. They don't. They don't owe me anything. What in the world am I upset about? That's absolutely crazy. I, I'm not going to let my feelings get hurt. They don't owe me anything. Anything that I ever did for them, I should have done out of the love of God, not out of self-serving. Amen? Not out of self-serving. Nobody owes me anything today. I don't need a word of encouragement today. Why? Because he encourages me. Why? Because I know that he's love and I know that he's in me and I know, I know him. So I don't need a word of encouragement. I don't need anyone to tell me that they appreciate me. Why? Because I know he appreciates me. I know. If we're doing things out of the right motive, it's like we say all the time, people come into church, oh, use me, use me, use me. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And then when you use them, they're like, all that people do is use me. <laughs> Check your motive. Check your motive. If everything you do, someone has to come back and say, thank you for doing that for me. Wrong motive. Amen. Wrong motive. We do it for Him. We do it to serve Him. We do it because the love of God is on the inside of us. It, 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 none of this is hard, is it? But it's nice to say thank you. But it is nice to say thank you, yes. The stuff is so simple. Why? Because... Too many times in today's world, we're just trying to blow people's minds with what we know. Wow. It's just like Joyce Meyer said. I said it a few weeks ago. 
She can write 100,000 books and sell them millions of dollars. But the book on love, she has a hard time getting off her book table. Why? Because we think we all full of love. <laughs> we think we're all full of love. Let me just say this too. Talking about consistent walk. See, we got to walk in love. Mm, it tells us that, doesn't it? Walk in love. Unbelievers will use your inconsistency to ease their guilty conscience. Yes. Yes. Won't they? Mm -hmm. They waiting on you to mess up. Well, yeah. Yeah. They waiting on you so they don't feel guilty about their sin. And so when we're not stead, faithful, full of love, Keep not, you can, you don't have the luxury to let your love tank get low. That's <laughs> you don't have it. And here's the, here's, the, here's the funny part. Every one of us can follow Jesus or he wouldn't have invited us to. He's not asking us to do something that we're not capable of doing. Well, I just can't love them. You just don't understand what they've done to me. No, I just understand you haven't died to yourself and you don't know him. Amen. <laughs> Oh, how dare you say no you don't know him if there is people you cannot forgive in your life you don't know him wow. that's, that's a hard word but it is the gospel amen if any man wants to follow after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me yeah. here's what we do <laughs> we run from what we can't walk through wow. That's you can't walk in love so you run you can't walk through that process of restoration so you run you can't walk through the, the repentance so you run that's what people do here's what, what I mean you don't need a new job remember you prayed for that job and now all of a sudden it gets tough and now all of a sudden, God, deliver me out of this valley. I can't take this anymore. Look at all these people around here. They're full of devils. And so you're in your closet. Oh, Lord Jesus, please give me a new job. Just tell me. Just tell me, God. I know. Just open up another door. Open up another. He already opened up the door, the one that you begged for, the one that you wanted, the one that was his will, or he wouldn't have opened it up whether you wanted it or not. And you walked through it. And now all of a sudden, all your prayer is consumed with, get me out of here, God. Get me out of these people are crazy <laughs> that's what I used to say it's crazy up in this place I can't take this anymore and so we pray and we pray and we pray oh Lord Jesus I know I know I've got a life sentence there I, I knew I knew when, when I've got a life sentence in this place I'm gonna have to retire from this place how in the world am I ever gonna survive am I ever gonna live and so we're praying and we're praying we're rebuking I rebuke that devil and sister so it's, oh no she is full of demons. That Jezebel spirit, she better get off of me today in the name of Jesus. And then we'll go in some days and we'll be like really happy and we'll be like, I got this today. It doesn't matter what anybody does. I'm going to love them. I'm going to love them. By 10 o'clock you're in the bathroom. God, I'm so sorry. I just bit off their arm. I Come on. And we spend all our time praying this way. And everything you just heard me say was people stuff. People stuff. <laughs> and we forgot wow. love never takes an account of anything done wrong oh, wow. <laughs> wow. love is not getting provoked nope. wow. <laughs> and we cried to God for 35 minutes our whole lunch hour. God, do I have to go back in there and put up with this? Just give me till four o'clock. Give me till four o'clock. Give me till four o'clock. Oh, in the name of Jesus. It's not about prayer at that people. It's not about prayer at that point. 
It's about walking in the light as he is in the light. Walking in the love of God no matter what they're doing to you, no matter what they're saying, no matter how bad you feel like that you have just split hell wide open. Yes, See, he didn't say sing to me. He said follow me. Wow. <laughs> we want to be in a place where we're singing in the rain all the time. <laughs> That's what we want in life. Why? Because we want the self-serving gospel. We don't ever want to be at a table where we know the one is going to betray us is sitting there. And not only are we going to sit at the table with them, but we're going to serve the very one that they know is about to go out and betray you. Jesus. And Jesus never got upset. He never said, oh, Lord, do I have to go in there and feed that man? Do I have to sit at that table with him? I know what he's going to do. <laughs> he never said that. He wasn't even upset. Why? Because he knew no one owed him anything. That's good. Amen. He was love. And he walked in love. Even to the point of the cross, he walked in love. Yeah. And that's the picture that we're supposed to see. You say, well, yeah, but he was the son of God. He came to this earth as a man. Amen. Yes, he was the son of God. Yes, he was the perfect man. I get all that. But guess what? God defeated the devil through the man. Yeah. Amen. Yep. He couldn't defeat him as God. He had to defeat him through the man because that's how sin had came in. We know it. We know it by doctrine, but yet we don't walk it. Amen? And you're like, oh my goodness. It was one, it was, oh, listen to this. It was man's blood that got put on the mercy seat. It was the blood of the man, Amen. Jesus. That got put on the mercy seat. Was it perfect? Oh, well, that's heresy. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man. And as a man, it said he came and he said, flesh, the Word became flesh and it dwelt among us. Amen. And Jesus, as a man, he didn't come as God. Well, how do you know that? God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. God don't anoint God. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. With, the Holy, with God. With God, yeah. The Spirit of God didn't have to come upon God. The Spirit of God had to come upon the man Jesus. Amen. Amen. We get Jesus. God doesn't sleep, but Jesus slept. He was a man. God isn't tempted, yet Jesus was tempted as we were. Why? Because he was a man. Yes. And we think, well, I can't do that. Oh, let's just go another way. You're not called to be an expression of what you've been through and how you responded to it. We were all born into Adam, and we all must be born again. Amen. And the power of the water baptism is that that old man went into that grave and died. Amen. Amen? That's the power of water baptism. That is the whole gospel in itself. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what my mama did. You don't know what grandpa did. You don't know the generational stuff that's in my family. Throw it away and die to it. Amen. Take up your cross. Deny yourself. The gospel is that simple. It's not being... I, because if you don't, all of that's governing your life. You have no joy. You have no peace. You have no happiness. And the only way you can get past that is to see what he went through so you could have life. To see what he walked in love. Even the people that was going to throw him off the cliff. The ones that crucified him. All the ones that spit on him. The ones that beat him. And he sits there and still says, forgive them. They know not what they do. Amen. 
Mm -mm 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 -mm. Stop living by your story. Because that was all in the life without him. Why take an identity in something that wasn't him? Amen. <laughs> when he died, you died. When he rose, you rose. We all have those stories. We do. We all have those stories. You know, it's interesting because you can talk to most Christians today, and if you walk up to a Christian today and you say, how you been? The first thing that they're going to do is they're going to give you two or three things that they've been going through that are really bad. Why do we do that? Why do we, do, why do we, why do we feel the need to do that? <sighs> Stop living by your story. You don't need to write a book about your former life. Wow. Write some new pages. You can't go back and rewrite what was. Tear the pages out and start afresh. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy. Deny yourself. It's not easy. No one said it was easy. <laughs> But it's our purpose. Amen? His loving you is not a feeling. It's a knowing of His love for me. <laughs> I know that He sees me as if I've never sinned because that's what His Word says. Yes. God sees me as though I never sinned. Yes. yes. So why do I hang on to all that stuff? That's, a that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Why don't I just walk the pages out knowing that he sees me as if I'd never sinned? Why don't we, why don't we live our lives that way? Talk about being able to walk in love. Don't be needy. Go to a higher truth. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Corinthians real quick. I'll wind down. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. All the things that love does not is listed right there. Envy, parade itself, puffed up, Behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity. But here's all the things love does do. It rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. It never fails. How do you handle people that you don't agree with? How do you handle people that have hurt you and done you wrong? How do you handle unbelievers? How many tears have you shed for those very people? Because that will gauge your love meter. That will gauge where you are in love. It's easy to give an opinion, people. Love lays down its life for one another. Today, too many Christians are living their life at the expense of others. Wow. We cannot do that. Consistent. Let me just bring up one more word. We are moody. <laughs> We are moody. Yes. We are moody. That's true. You know what that means? We are inconsistent. Yeah. Wow. We are inconsistent. If you can't find it in his life, then you can't do it. If it isn't producing life, then it's not the Lord. You can give yourself no permission to be moody. You have to put off the old, put on the new. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I'm not even going to finish. 
How many of you could say, mm, I've had a day or two, I've been moody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive us. Lift your hands right now. Father, I pray that every person in this room right now would experience your love. Would come face to face with Jesus Christ, their Savior. Would come face to face with the God of love. And I pray, Father, that no matter what we've ever known about our Bibles, it's nothing without love. It's nothing. And Lord, we ask tonight that that love would be shed abroad in our hearts just as you said in your word it would be. Yes. And that that love, Father God, would teach us to walk steadfast yes. And consistent to be steady Christians yes. not moved by every wind of doctrine not moved by all the cunningness of the enemy not moved by every assignment that comes our way not moved by other people's responses and reactions to things but God I pray in the name of Jesus that your love your love Father will just settle in our hearts right now. Yes. It's only by faith, God. It's only by faith. We want to know you. Yes. We want to know you. Yes. Fall in this place right now. Yes. Change hearts that are cold and stony. And give us a heart of flesh, Father God. Give us a heart to love the unlovable. Give us a, a heart that doesn't have to reason and analyze everything out, but love just so supersedes all those things that we think that we know, God. I pray right now, take us to a higher truth tonight in the name of Jesus. And let the power of your Spirit come over our bodies, our souls, yes. and our spirits right now in the name of Jesus. We don't want to be clanging cymbals. No. We want to walk and talk love. We want, Father God, to be consumed with the love of God. Burn the fire of your love into our hearts. Tattoo it upon us, God. Let us see you for who you truly are so that we can be like you, knowing that our end purpose is to love. Yes. To love with the love of God. Not a love that we have, but the love of God. Right now, in the name of of Jesus blanket us blanket us with these truths we repent for reading your word self-serving yes we repent of it tonight in the name of Jesus help us to see with eyes of love when we read our scriptures let love be our motive in everything that we do, every gift that we operate out, every calling that is upon our lives, God, in our homes, in our churches, all around our community, in the name of Jesus. Let them say we are guilty of love. In Jesus' name, I pray, Father, that me may be one with you. And you in us, in the name of Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another. Let us love one another. Yes, Lord. Not with an earthly love. 
but with the agape love of God. And let the message of the gospel, for God so loved the world, and the simplicity of it, let it spread like wildfire. Let it spread like wildfire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Steadfast spirit, renew a steadfast spirit, renew a steadfast spirit on the inside of us tonight. Thank you, Lord. As we return to you, in Jesus' name. Can you receive that? Can you feel that? Yes. It's powerful. Yes. It's powerful. It has to be by faith. That's nothing that we can even, I mean, we can learn about it, we can teach about it, but I'm going to believe tonight that as you read the Word of God in the coming weeks that you're going to start seeing things you've never seen before, and it's going to be those simple things. It's going to be those little tiny things, those little tiny love things that are in there that it's like we bypass because we want all this deep, 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 deep revelation that none of us can walk in what we do know, let alone what we don't walk. So let's not, let's not, let's not, let's just dig for love. Amen. Amen. Let's dig for love. How about that? Amen. In your word this week, everything you read, ask yourself this question. Show me the love of God in what I just read. Show me the love of God in what I just read so that I can walk in it. Amen? That's good. Hallelujah. Give him praise right now. He's Woo! worthy. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus, with the love of the Lord. He's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah.